On Tuesday, Ohio voters rejected a ballot measure that would have changed the threshold to pass constitutional amendments in the state from 50% to 60%. Now, this vote was widely seen as a referendum on abortion since Ohio voters will be voting on an amendment to the Constitution, whether or not to codify Roe v. Wade into law. And this measure, if it had passed, would have changed the threshold for a constitutional amendment, making that much harder. Now, Republicans were largely backing the no campaign. Democrats, independents, and other groups were backing the yes campaign. And obviously, by the results, uh, the no campaign won in a landslide, 57 to 43. So we're going to talk about uh, this referendum as well as abortion in general in a lot of these states leading up to 2024, and ultimately how this ties into the 2024 elections in Ohio. So we're going to get to all of that in just a second, but first, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing down below and liking this video if you enjoy. Now, this vote, again, wasn't directly on abortion, but it was heavily tied to abortion because Republicans wanted to change the laws in Ohio to make it harder to pass constitutional amendments because Democrats in the state and liberal activist groups have been trying to put measures on the ballot that would protect abortion. And Republicans in Ohio know that voters are going to pass those measures, especially since abortion access is very popular. And to be honest, the Republicans' position on abortion is very unpopular not just in states like Ohio that are sort of lean red states, but even red states like Kansas, where you had voters vote against 5941, a ballot measure that would have removed protections for abortion rights. So all over the country, basically outside of the Bible Belt, you know, places like Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, uh, you have voters widely rejecting uh, these restrictions on abortion. And this really is the continuation of backlash against Roe v. Wade being overturned because ultimately Roe v. Wade as a statute was extremely popular with the American public and Republicans seem to have overstepped their boundary on the issue of abortion and they're certainly paying for it electorally. We saw that in the midterms. We're seeing that in these ballot measures and we might see it again in 2024, especially since a lot of Republicans really haven't gotten the message. And now that doesn't mean Republicans don't have to be pro-life or can't champion pro-life issues, but the way they're talking about abortion and the way they're centering their campaigns in some cases on getting rid of abortion, it certainly isn't working and the public certainly isn't receptive to that messaging. So, you know, looking at these results in Ohio, you have a lot of counties that are red counties, you know, Northeast Ohio, these counties that were Obama counties that flipped to Trump and even some of these counties uh, that went to Hillary Clinton, Mahoning County, I believe, went to Hillary Clinton very narrowly, uh, went to Donald Trump in 2020. And these counties overwhelmingly uh, rejected uh, this ballot measure because ultimately these counties are not socially conservative uh, like you would think most Republican areas are, or at least not as socially conservative uh, as the Republican Party is on this issue. Because again, as I mentioned, Republicans are very much out of lockstep with how Americans feel about abortion. Most Americans are very comfortable with abortion up until a certain period. Now, Democrats have been able to frame the abortion issue against Republicans because they're the ones that are trying to further restrict it even after Roe v. Wade was overturned. That was already a big enough turnout machine for Democrats, but now you have Republicans in red states like Texas, Mississippi that are you know, outlawing abortion uh, and sometimes with even no exceptions whatsoever. So when people hear about that in purple states or even lean red states like Ohio that uh, by and large supported what Roe v. Wade was um, and that it was a federal protection not left to the states, now it's much more of a turnout issue because Democrats can get voters to turn out against um, these abortion restrictions. And again, like I said, uh, Republicans are on the losing side of this issue. And if you look at some of the numbers here in Franklin County, 75% no. Franklin County only voted 65% Democratic in 2020. Dayton County and other population center, 61-39, uh, voted for Joe Biden very narrowly. So you're starting to see it here. Uh, no is outrunning Democrats by a pretty large margin. Again, Donald Trump won the state of Ohio by eight points. No has won by 14 points. So when you really look at it, there's a number of Republicans that are voting in favor of sort of pro-life positions on these ballot measures. And that does indicate that you have a segment of the Republican Party that is pro-choice or isn't overtly um, anti-abortion. 
So this is an issue where Republicans really need to tread carefully because, again, this isn't the only time we've had a ballot measure like this. You had Kansas. Uh, you even had ballot measures in Arkansas that failed uh, to restrict abortion. And Arkansas is sort of a Bible Belt bordering state. So you have the reddest of reddest states rejecting uh, all out bans on abortion or even the talk of restricting abortion. And that's something Republicans really need to be aware of because in 2024, Democrats are going to make abortion a top issue. And why wouldn't they, considering the fact that the American public agrees with them by and large? Now, you could argue, well, Republicans just need to argue that Democrats are more extreme on abortion, but that argument hasn't landed, especially when Republicans or Republican judges have overturned Roe v. Wade. That's how the average voter in America sees it. They see Republicans as the extremists on these issues, not the Democrats. And these ballot measures and you know the past few election cycles sort of speak to that. Now, looking ahead to 2024, one candidate that stands out to me in this is Frank LaRose, who's a declared candidate for Senate in Ohio. He very much tied himself to issue one and trying to get this amendment to pass. And he had campaigned on the fact that this was going to be used to stop the furthering of abortion in Ohio. This is where he went all across the state and basically said, we need to pass this amendment so we can make it harder for Democrats and liberals to codify abortion in Ohio. And ultimately that failed, but there's plenty of video evidence and all that of Frank LaRose going to these rallies, championing uh, pro-life positions. And that's certainly going to be used against him in 2024. Because again, if you look at some of these counties, red counties, Mahoning County, Trumbull County, these are counties that are now voting for Donald Trump by considerable margins. And these are also counties that rejected the pro-life position by considerable margins. Now, again, I know this vote wasn't overtly about abortion, but everybody knew that this vote was basically the precursor to what's coming in November, which is when Ohio voters are going to vote whether or not to codify essentially Roe v. Wade statewide in Ohio, nullifying a lot of the laws Republicans have passed, you know, restricting abortion. So everybody knew what issue one actually was about. You know, Republicans, I think, were very foolish uh, to even make this play in the first place, especially considering the fact that, again, any vote brought to the people on abortion is going to side uh, essentially with the pro-choice position, especially after Roe v. Wade. Pre-Roe v. Wade, you did have some very red states that were supporting the pro-life position, Louisiana, etc. But now that the environment has fundamentally changed, the argument on abortion is a lot different because, again, Republicans are the ones that are far outside the Overton window on this issue. And it really wasn't a problem for Republicans before Roe v. Wade was overturned because every voter knew sort of that Roe v. Wade was intact, that abortion really couldn't be banned outright, even though Democrats had often campaigned that Republicans were going to do that. You know, if you'd done a little bit of research, everyone knew that Republicans under Roe v. Wade couldn't do that. And abortion, as a result, was never really a major issue in any uh, statewide races or federal races before Roe v. Wade. You know, obviously there's exceptions, but for the most part, abortion was never a top issue. 2022, abortion was a top issue in a lot of these battleground states. Pennsylvania was one of them, Ohio, etc. So that was on the mind of voters. Now, you know, in 2022, you had varying results. J.D. Vance was able to win Ohio by six points in 2022. Obviously, in Pennsylvania, abortion became an issue. Doug Mastriano losing by 15 points, I believe it was, almost 15 points. Dr. Oz losing by five points. So, again, it depends on the state. It depends on the candidates. Um, and it also depends on turnout because Democrats are using these abortion referendums to get their voters out. It's a very smart way uh, to win these races. And, you know, Republicans don't really have a galvanizing issue that gets voters out. I mean, maybe ballot measures on crime, but, you know, there's really very few issues where Republicans can animate their electorate and get them out the way Democrats can with abortion. Because again, abortion is not just a Democratic issue. The vast majority of independents, even about a third of Republicans, are pro-choice on the issue of abortion. So you have people that are voting Republican that are also voting uh, for the pro-choice position in these referendums. And that's something Republicans need to contend with because this is an issue that they are losing on. And again, it took 50 years for Republicans and conservatives to get rid of Roe v. Wade. It's certainly going to take decades and decades to change the discourse on abortion, if Republicans can even do that at this point. You know, I really don't think that's the case. But if they were to attempt to do that, this would have to be a generational thing. It's not something that would change overnight, especially given the fact that you're seeing such a backlash against 
Roe v. Wade being overturned. And really the big warning was that Nebraska special election, I believe it was, uh, in the summer of last year. And then, of course, we had the New York State special election, and I think it was New York 19, where Mark Molinaro was supposed to win that race, and he lost to Pat Ryan, uh, partly because Democrats were so energized about abortion that nothing else really mattered. And, you know, looking ahead at 2024, you better believe that Sherrod Brown is going to campaign on abortion. Uh, you know, he knows that Republicans are very unpopular on this issue, and he knows that Ohio is very much a pro-choice state by and large. So, you know, again, a general election dynamic is going to be different. You're going to have Donald Trump on the ballot. You know, Ohio is going to probably go red on the presidential level, maybe barring the exception that Donald Trump could be behind bars uh, at that point, although we really don't know what's going on with that. Everything's sort of changing by the day with the indictments and whatnot. But, you know, for the most part, Ohio is going to go red in 2024 on the presidential level. The real question is, can there be a down ballot effect big enough to knock off Sherrod Brown and give Republicans the Senate majority? Because Republicans cannot win the Senate majority without Ohio. You know, they'd have to flip Montana, West Virginia. That could technically do it. But Ohio is such a winnable state. It really is a lost opportunity if Republicans are unable to win this state. And there's other issues, too. You've got uh, I think a weak candidates, a weak candidate in Bernie Marino. I don't think he's a strong candidate for the Republicans. You know, somebody like Matt Dolan or Frank LaRose potentially could be stronger. But again, Frank LaRose basically tied uh, his entire campaign to issue one and it failed miserably, which I think, honestly, if I was an Ohio Republican, I, I wouldn't even have touched issue one with a 10 foot pole because it was a losing issue for Republicans. Everyone knew the conservative position was going to lose catastrophically, and that's certainly going to have a negative impact in 2024. So, of course, my advice to Republicans is to stop talking about abortion because at this point in time, it's really only hurting them. Abortion only helps the Democrats. You know, the argument that Democrats are more extreme on abortion just isn't resonating with voters. And again, maybe there's other ways to frame that argument. But, you know, as of right now, Democrats are going to continue to win and win on this issue because Republicans just have very terrible messaging on it. And also their position is not the popular one. Again, there's very few, there's some niche arguments you could make on abortion where Republicans would be favored. But again, when you just have the backdrop of Roe v. Wade being taken away, that's still very much fresh in voters' minds and they're going to vote accordingly, especially considering the fact that anywhere from you know 55 to 65% of the American electorate is pro-choice and supports abortion. And that's just the fundamental truth of it. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Please leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss any more videos I put out. As always, again, thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.